The time has come. What a hard pill to swallow, man. There is so much money in this, it's insane. Everything that I got was from reputable people, so everything is genuine Honda parts. Aside from the K-Tune stuff and the ARP head studs, I got King bearings, NPR rings, but I went with the OEM gasket, OEM timing, OEM K20 oil pump. If you didn't know already, if you're new, the block has already been ran through from the machine shop and honed out. Surfaces have been checked to make sure that everything is nice and flat, and it is. My crankshaft I had polished and cleaned and all that stuff, and I had them blast, media blast the timing cover because it was bad. This whole motor was grimy. I'll, I'll put a little clip in here right here of <laughs> what it was, so. It's come a long way in a short amount of time. We'll grab some uh, coffee filters and start cleaning this with some wax and grease. You can use brake cleaner or wax and grease. It doesn't really matter. It's the same shit, basically. Use coffee filters because they're cheap and they're lint-free. I mean, they better be lint-free. They'd be kind of messed up. <laughs> Have some coffee and get a big old mouthful of lint. They are Dollar General <laughs> coffee filters, so who knows? Let's do it. Let's get into this. Let's get this thing all prepped and ready. Now we can start getting our piston rings all set. These gloves are trash. I don't know where my other ones went. Way too small. First things first is the rings, which my UPS lady crammed in the my mailbox with a whole bunch of other stuff. So hopefully she didn't bend anything. The oil, first and second. This is just a ring setter. Get the ring in there evenly so that you can actually measure it correctly. Because if you just shove it in there and it's cockeyed, you're not gonna get the right gauge or right thickness with your feeler gauge. Bam, now it's perfect. Take it out. These are like 15 bucks on Amazon. I'm gonna leave links for all this stuff on here, but this helps you guys out and it helps me out too. So it's just a referral link that benefits me too. So I'm helping you help me. Help me help you. For all my torque specs, the ring gaps, everything that I possibly could need for rebuilding this engine, I'm using eManual Online. It's essentially like all data, but for a lot cheaper. I'll leave a link in the video description for you guys. I have all my rings all gapped out and ready, just sitting over there. All right, so I'm just gonna get all of the piston rings mounted up. Not in the correct orientation or anything, just on the actual pistons. And then when we go to press them in, these are gonna move around and everything else. You don't wanna set them until you're actually ready to put them into the block. So all you got is your top, your bottom, and then you know you have your oil rings, which really don't make that big of a difference, or the gappage and all that stuff. Now if you can see that right here, it says 2N. That is gonna be your bottom ring. You just wanna be super careful. You don't wanna stretch them out too bad. You can get a ring spanner wrench if you want, whatever, but I don't have one. Gotta go straight gangster with it. Man, it's hot. Holy cow. Pistons are all ready to go. I ended up having to go to AutoZone to get a new piston ring clamp because the one I got on Amazon is a complete piece of crap and it deserves to go right in the trash. Actually, that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna get our main bearings in, do our plexi gauge and all that, make sure everything's within spec. I have the oil squirters sitting in some chem dip right now. And then I'm just gonna get the main bearings ready right this second. See, I wasn't playing. Good old DG coffee filters. You'll know the difference between the mains and the rods because the mains are gonna have an offset groove. You just wanna give them a quick, quick little clean off before you install them on the back side at least. I wouldn't suggest putting any lubricating oil behind it because you need these to stay in place. And when you're checking your thicknesses, your tolerances, it can potentially change that tolerance. So I just put them in dry. I'll lube the inside, not the backside. Freshly cleaned and polished.
I wanna do it with regular motor oil because I don't wanna use that thick assembly oil when I'm checking with the plastic gauge. So I'm just gonna get a, a, just a little coat of this stuff, whatever, just cheap stuff. Let's check the gapping on everything. First time this motor's probably seen fresh oil in 15 years. There's red and then there's green plastic gauge. Since we're working with Honda, it's in inches, you want the green one. You can get these at Amazon, O'Reilly's, whatever. You take the plastic gauge out. This is what you're gonna be compressing. And then this is your clearances. Now I pre-cut five pieces on here. Now this is where it gets kind of tricky. Now you see, they're on each individual one. And then we put the girdle on, do our torques, take the girdle back off, and then measure your plastic gauge. Now be super careful. All right, I got the bolts sitting in chem dip. I'm gonna go take them out. Specs are 22 pounds. did its job. So now factory specs is 0 .0007 to 0 .0017. So as long as we're within that spec, let's say that's probably 15. This one kind of smeared a little bit, I think. I would say that's still 15, maybe 16. The middle journal is different. I'll get back to that one. I gotta look that up. Good, good. The middle is 0 0.0010 to 0 0.0019. So this has got a higher gapping, which is fine because everything specs out. We're good to go. Crank's good so far. We gotta check the crank play, but as of right now, the gapping for Gucci. Next is gonna be the thrust washers, which goes in journal number four. So there's a flat spot and then there's a groove spot. The groove spot faces outward from the journal block on both sides, you know? So the grooves go on the outside, outside. Assembly lube. <laughs> I'm turned around. Wrong one. <laughs> I've been standing on the other side of the block this entire time, so I am human, but at least it can only go in one, so. Bearings are done, thrust washers are in, everything's specced out. We gotta torque this back down to 22 and then 56 degrees, which you're not gonna be able to see. Like I said, I'm just using the compass on my phone. I gotta post this up against the wall so it doesn't move and then do it. It's kind of janky, but hey, get everything torqued out and then we can start working on the pistons. But since this is the last time that we're putting this girdle on, we have to put RTV on here. So there's no gaskets for this. Honda Bond is it. get this oil plug out bam you got to take that off if you're gonna do a k20 oil pump it's a 12 mil i don't know what i stole it from but we'll figure it out later throw some rtv on it just send her home good to go
I got these oriented the way that they're supposed to be, the oil rings. Here's a little clip of it, just so you guys have reference. I wasn't gonna film it because self-explanatory. Make sure you throw some oil in your cylinder. When you're doing this, leave a little extra. The arrow goes towards cylinder number one. Like butter, baby. Like a glove. Piston number two was not having, man. It probably took me about 15 times to finally get that thing to seat correctly. Super annoying, but it's in. Nothing's damaged, so no harm, no foul. Wore me out. I'm, I'm gonna call it a night. I'll get back to this tomorrow, man. Got my homie Gunther here to get hair in my engine. We're gonna put some plasti gauge on here to check clearances too. The bearing notch goes to the same side as the other bearing notch. Or if you wanna just do this, the RBB is gonna read towards the rear main seal. One way you can do it, just writing backwards essentially. 0 0.0030 for service. These are at like 0 0.0028. For borderline right there, but it'll work, but not exactly ideal. All right, so if you're a jackass like me and forgot the order of your pistons, I have it figured out for you. And you're welcome, because it took me about freaking two hours to figure it out. For free spinning, nice and easy. This ratchet sucks, it has nothing to do with the engine. So if you forgot the order of your end caps, because really that's what matters. Your end caps are the ones that need to be in order. So if you have the same exact, I don't know if it's all like this, but the ones that are, this is from an 08 TSX. So RBB.06, RBB.06. And both of these have those little dots right here, right? Those are the middle ones. And we'll rotate it. RBB06 with the dot in the center. Those are your end ones. Now I tried to keep this stuff in order, but sitting there moving it around inside and outside of chem dip and everything else, this thing was nasty. I did what I could. I messed up. I didn't get it in order. And so what happened was you try to spin this after you get the end caps on there and it wouldn't rotate at all. It would lock right up. As soon as you tightened up them uh, rod bolts, it would tighten right up. I'm hoping that somebody else needs that information because that was fucking frustrating, man. We're good now. Just a little embarrassed, that's all. But during that frustration, I didn't film me doing the, the plasti gauge on this. I'll still provide the information for you guys. Same concept as doing the main bearings. You just put them on your under your end caps and do the same exact process and that's it. But all these measured out fine, good to go. Oil pump time. I'm not excited about grinding this down. But in order to get this K20 pump to mount up, you gotta cut all this stuff out. I'm sure you guys have seen this a hundred times, but can't find a marker. So I'm just gonna use tape. So I know where to stop grinding at. So I'm gonna tape off everything that has a port. Metal shavings could get in. I would have cleaned up this a little bit better, but something happened with my air compressor. Like the electrical part of it, I think is fried. That is what you need to do. I kind of nicked it right here on accident, but it's not gonna hurt you. have to get the chain on first and on this. Otherwise, if you put it on and then try to put the chain on, it ain't gonna work. You can't put the chain on after you get the oil pump on. So make sure you do it at the same time. Otherwise, you're gonna be taking it right back off. This is for the chain guide for the oil pump. I'm gonna be reusing the old chain guide bolts for this. I'm just now realizing this, that my oil pump chain tensioner was not with my kit. Well, this sucks. I didn't realize that my kit didn't have the oil chain tensioner with it. So I have to order one and now it's gonna be probably a week until I get one. But I can still do timing and everything else. We're just gonna bypass that for now, continue mission. I thought about using my old one, but as much as I've already done to this and how much money is already into it, I don't wanna take that chance and use something that's 
potentially gonna fail later. We'll just skip it for now. You know, it's nothing. Just, you know, three bolts, release tension. That is it. I had full intentions of making this an entire build top to bottom, but as I was putting the head on, one of the camshaft holder bolts snapped. Apparently 16 foot pounds was too much for that little guy handles. I'm in the market for a new head, which is awesome. So I found a bare head. I'm gonna have to transfer over all the valves and reseat them, everything else. So I guess that's just another video I'm gonna have to make. The chain tensioner for the oil pump. I mean, I'm so frustrated. The bottom end is pretty much done. Delays happen. It's part of the game. Hopefully you learn some stuff in the process, but I'm gonna try and get this engine put together within the next week. I don't like having stuff unfinished, especially stuff like this where dust and dirt and everything else can get into it. As far as the rear main seal goes, we're not gonna be able to access that until after we take the engine off the stand. Make sure you stay tuned and follow my IG because it sucks. I have hardly anybody on there. I got quite a bit on TikTok, but my IG is so small, it's so hard to make progress on there. So if you would, please go follow that. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.